Uh, missed. So we're going to start over again. Let's turn back time. First of all, let me uh, update the scoreboard. One ball down, and it belongs to Charlie Pinkett, shooting in the green apron there. Yeah, my apologies, guys. I, I realized we, we had no audio for a couple minutes there. So. As I understand it, there are some new audience members watching who may not be so familiar with the game of one pocket. That's the game we're playing right now, one pocket. And basically, you have to get all your balls in one pocket. Charlie is, uh, Charlie Pinkett is trying to get his balls in the bottom right hand pocket and Kevin the opposite left hand pocket. Mm -hmm. Oh, looks like John came with the cookies. Hey, John. I've been bad. I've been terrible. Thank you, John. Oatmeal raisin cookies coming up. Uh-oh, I'm not supposed to talk about food. That's the new rule. Can't talk about food. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so as the score as the score changes, I will uh, keep track. Kevin Mitchell versus Charlie Pinkett. It's been a while since I've done this, so I'm kind of out of practice. <laughs> Bear with me. Looks like Kevin makes a ball. So it's 1-1 one, one now. I'll tell you what, guys. We have literally hundreds of one-pocket videos on my YouTube channel. So I would encourage you to uh, subscribe to... Uh, POV pool on YouTube and there's a lot of one pocket to watch there. Thank you. 
Nice shot. Charlie de defending his side and uh, taking a ball out from Mitchell's side, from Kevin's side. Now Kevin's Kevin's in a little trouble here. Might be room to kick, kick under the uh, ten and get the one out of there. I don't think he's looking at that shot. He wants to. If you could kick into the one and kick uh, the left side of the one ball, not the right side of the one ball. You might bring the cue ball past the 12, that way you'd uh, prevent Charlie from getting a, a bank in there. Oh, that was a good, uh, that's called moving the furniture. So what Kevin did there was took two balls away from Charlie's pocket and um, brought one of those balls uh, toward his pocket. So now, this is a game of cat and mouse uh, at times. Let's take a for instance here. If Kev, see the 13 and the 12, or the 13 and the one ball together, if those balls were like apart, and if they were a little closer to Kevin's pocket, Charlie would be in a lot of trouble right now um, because uh, Kevin has hidden the cue ball behind the stack. That's what they call, see that group of balls there, that group of balls that uh, Charlie broke up very softly earlier in the beginning of the game. That's called the stack. And when you hide your cue ball behind the stack, you prevent your opponent from uh, really pulling off any strategic moves. Now, Charlie's done the same thing, but he has kept the ball at close quarters in the same side of the stack so he hasn't really uh, helped Kevin. He hasn't totally helped himself either. He's put a ball in front of his pocket, but Kevin's very easily going to, or uh, he'll make an attempt. He might do something wrong here. No, nope, he, he feathers off the uh, eight ball, and he hides nicely behind the 10 ball. Good work. So now Kevin, Kevin's going to uh, probably knock this 10 away and bring his cue ball, create some distance. Okay. So really that's, uh, as you guys can see, that's, oh, I'm sorry, that wasn't Kevin, that was Charlie who sh shot that ball. So that was purely a defensive shot. Kevin's now, this is kind of a free shot for Kevin. He can now use that advantage to uh, bring balls to his side. As you can see, he's done that very well. He tried to make that six ball. If he'd have made that six ball, uh, he very easily could have run out another three or four balls and possibly even closed out the rack. Remember, guys, eight balls 
means you win the game. <coughs> and if uh, somebody scratches if, or fouls, a foul is when you don't hit a rail after you hit a ball or if you don't hit a ball at all, that's a foul. If you foul, you owe one ball. Okay, so Kevin, uh, I think basically Charlie was trying to hide behind that 13-1. And unfortunately, he didn't get there. So, Kevin could possibly uh, string a few pearls here. This is definitely a game of patience and strategy all the way. If you like strategy, if you like, you know, uh, if you're not a gunslinger, you know how they say a gunslinger who can make everything from anywhere on the table? If you're not a gunslinger, this is a good game for you. And by the way, there's a little bit of money to be made in this game for those who like to play it. For those who get good at it. So Kevin is, uh, instead of spinning away, whoa, he plays a very good shot. He took a chance, though. Instead of spinning away and uh, basically just setting up for the nine ball, uh, he decided to go up and down table and take a chance at trying to get shape on those four balls that he's pointing at right now. And... Uh, he did a good job. Eleven ball goes down. Probably shoot the nine and uh, possibly stun back up and out for the seven ball or stun underneath for a shot at the 15. See what he does. Oh. He spun that ball and uh, and tried to move a few things as well. Good work. He tried to draw right into the 10. Unfortunately, he hit the 15 as well. So three balls down. Right now, in this inning for Kevin, he's playing a, a difficult combo instead. He could have played for the 15. He decided to play the combo because uh, uh, I figured he thought he could close out from there. So three balls down makes it four to one. And so Charlie's now on the defensive. I do want to note, though, guys, that um, this game of one pocket can very quickly turn around uh, just because Charlie uh, is down four to one. Uh, all it takes is one mistake. And Charlie actually did not play an extremely good shot here either. But um, he, this shot is a tester for Kevin.
is it? Uh, huh? So it looks like nine balls on the table now, so it looks like uh, it's two to four. shot or some well I'm not really sure he might be playing for distance he played a bank okay this is a this is a tough situation for Charlie uh, Kevin's got a ball above his pocket and next to his pocket and Ideally, he'd like to get one of those balls out of there and bring his cue ball, you know, somewhere within the vicinity of the one and the 13 underneath those balls. Or take them both out. He may just have to, uh, he may just have to take a flyer on this, uh, and uh, see if he can. I mean, it's not worth giving up the game just to. There's not a lot of shots here for him. Yeah, he's going to just. He tried to jam it. Kevin gets to have a field day now. one and Kevin gets game one that'll be one zero Kevin Mitchell and take a look at the game count on the scoreboard guys that indicates uh, the actual score in games so uh, zero one means that uh, Kevin's got one and Charlie has zero Do you have any one pocket questions, <laughs> Geraldine? I know I have a general tournament question. Oh, sure. Are they racing to two on the winner side and one on the one loss side? Yes, it's race to two, race to one. I think we only had 16 players today. Not a big field. Uh, but no, no, big, no big deal. We'll, we'll see some good matches. We've got Santos is here. Johnny Kang is here, Frank Almanza, Catfish. Wayne Pullen. Wayne Pullen came, and he came in third place in the uh, Seniors One Pocket down in Texas. Uh, King Kong is here. So uh, we got some contenders here, all. Competing and, uh, you know, willing to uh, give it their best shot. And we're going to see some good matches. Martin's here. 
Uh, did I say Santos? I did say Santos. Any other general one pocket questions? Or general tournament questions? <laughs> This uh, tournament, by the way, is every first Saturday of the month, except when the first Sunday is on the 1st. So the 1st of May is tomorrow. We decide to have the first Saturday one pocket the day before the first, sat first Sunday nine ball. So tomorrow is the first Sunday nine ball. And if you like nine ball, this is definitely one of the best workouts you could have is to come to hard times and play the first Sunday nine ball. Including the weeklies are good. I just heard some really good news. I'll talk to you about it later. <laughs> I'll just give you guys a hint. It involves Francisco Bustamante. Love that guy. So one for Charlie.
Kevin's been playing a lot more lately. Uh, he kind of dropped out of the scene for about four years. He's he's uh, just enough time to go to college. I just believe. enough. Yeah, you know what? I'm I'm actually I like Kevin because he's one of those rare few pool players that is a college graduate, and uh, you know he put uh, he he actually put his priorities in the right place, and uh, he's done well for himself. He's a teacher now. And I think math is it or English? I don't know. Anyway. So, uh, but uh, as of late, he has been playing uh, a little bit more. I've seen him play a few nine ball tournaments. He has played a one pocket over at the Golden Q in South El Monte. <laughs> and, uh, you know, when, when I knew him, uh, which, by the way, I know he looks young. I, I think he's around 28 now, 29. But uh, he was about 20 when I knew him, like seven or eight years ago. When I knew him, he was a very good player. He had a lot of talent. It looks like this game is going up table. Slowly but surely. Remember, we do have a Martin rule here. Um, any more than four balls past the kitchen line will be spotted. And that's for tournament play, just so... Uh, just for this tournament. Yeah, that's not the general yeah. rule of one pocket. If you're playing... So, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, this ball right here, the three ball, is one ball in the kitchen. That, that kitchen line is, uh, you guys can see the kitchen line on the table there. And in a game where you don't have the, the Martin rule, <clears throat> the game could last potentially very long. And uh, being that it's a one-day tournament, uh, they practice the rule here, so the game will move a little faster. Yes, uh, basically, you know, what Geraldine's saying is that the rule was designed to prevent slow play and designed to prevent players from uh, dragging up. It's supposed to speed up play. It's also known as the Grady rule, you know, Grady Matthews, actually, I think Grady Matthews was one of the guys that came up with the rule in the first place, not because Grady was a slow player, but because he came up with the rule. Grady Matthews, rest in peace. But at hard times, Bellflower we call it the Martin Rule. Well, yeah, we call it the Martin Rule because there's a guy here named Martin who's actually in this tournament today. Uh, they stipulated this rule on behalf, of, uh, on behalf of him because he consistently held up the bracket. Shame on you, Martin. It happens, you know, it's a yeah. strategic game. It's a, uh, sometimes, you know, one mistake could cost you the game. I guess that goes for any Q sport game, right? <laughs> one mistake sure. could mm -hmm. cost you the entire game.
Yeah, but the thing about one pocket is uh, you can make one mistake and 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 it can it it can change things incredibly. What when when things look like uh, things are going when when it looks like things are going your way. But yeah, you're right. You can say that about anything. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was going to get at the job till I showed up to the interview naked. That, that changed things a little. <laughs> Kevin played a three rail bank, banking the ball toward his hole. Very good shot. Uh, but, uh, He did not see see what he did, though. He did leave Charlie with uh, an easy escape. Charlie can easily possibly bank at this ball. So basically, Kevin's priority there was to hide behind the stack and play that shot or get a safer cue ball. For many, many years, the white, the cue ball, has been referred to as the rock, holding the rock. This game is all about controlling the rock. Good bank by Charlie. If you don't control the rock in this game, uh, then you can uh, lose control of the game. Kevin's playing with a sneaky Pete, yes. Not much you can, you know, off offensively, I don't know what he's really looking at because uh, you know, he, he does have many opportunities here to bring balls toward his hole and come up and hide but he is taking a lot of time trying to decide which way to go with this Charlie is a fairly good player oh he's good I mean I've played him and lost you know I mean even you know we play even and I've lost to him he's a good player he's been learning the game actually I think he's been only been playing it around four three or four years now you guys out there might that think long? that that's you guys out there might think that's all that's a long time but no i thought he's been playing less than that i mean i've been playing one pocket now for about 12 years and it's funny uh i've only in the past five years really started to kind of like learn some more of the nuances of the game and even then you know uh, it's it's a very difficult game to uh, stay good at uh, if you don't play it a lot. I tend to think one pocket's one of my favorite games to to watch. I tend to think that one pocket um, is a more interesting game than rotation. Um, I think at at some point in a pool player's career, and we've talked about this. Uh, the players, you know, you 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 learn the patterns, and it just becomes, you know, a game of uh, hopefully you make the next shot, you know, and don't be a little off. Uh, whereas one pocket, it's a lot of the nuances that matter and the strategy that matters in the game. Yeah, you are correct. I mean, nuances is 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 a, is a very good word because you know there's uh, I mean an encyclopedia of shots that uh, come up in the game often, and uh, times when you you should play those shots and should never play those shots. <laughs> wow, though. The 
11 spun off that rail something, didn't it? Speaking of uh, good one pocket players, uh, our friend Ken Hoshida, who owns the Golden Q, mm -hmm. um, had a heart transplant last week. Last week, a week and a half ago now. Yeah, about yeah, about ten days now. His second heart <laughs> transplant. <laughs> um, so we send out positive thoughts to him. Um, someone that you've been learning from the last two years. Oh uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, we call him Lockdown Kenny. <laughs> uh, at uh, <laughs> you know, we lovely, lovingly call him Lockdown Kenny. Uh, very, very good player, um, and and also a good friend. We just want to say hi to you out there, Kenny, and uh, wish you the best. I know you're going to be okay. And I think he's, uh, I mean, in my opinion, he's a, he's a good teacher, too. He's a great teacher. So, as you guys can see, now we have two balls in the kitchen. cooking <laughs> they're making hot dogs in the <laughs> kitchen Interesting, uh, you know, that uh, this is one of those scenarios where you shouldn't play that shot, you know, uh, that, that bank is possible. This bank is possible, but um, but uh, with, uh, with those balls out in the open like that, you, 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 you don't want to miss that shot and leave an open shot for Kevin. Clearly, he can make the four. He has a little bit of angle, too, that if he wanted, he could stun the ball up table for the two ball, which is on the side rail, or draw out and possibly set up for the nine or the 15. He's taking a look at it. Wow, then there's that. He tried to come around and go down for the six. In a way, um, that's a safe shot because he's, he's playing for the problem ball, right? So he's playing for the ball that's near Charlie's hole. Uh, he could have, he might have been trying to set that up as a bank and maybe just overrolled with not enough spin but too much follow. Anyway, uh, Kevin's in good shape right now. Uh, but like I said, you know, it's about uh, one mistake, right? Yeah, it looks like I've lost count of one of the balls. There's ten on the table, but only four on the score, and I'm not sure who has the third ball. I believe it's Kevin. I see it in uh, I see it in Kevin's kitchen, in Kevin's uh, ball tray. Charlie's taking some big chances here. 
And I think what he's trying to do is play a safe cue ball, like double him up behind all this traffic, but it's not happening as you can see here. He's leaving Kevin like open shots and not, not so much difficult open shots, but like uh, open shot where it's not crucial if he misses because uh, Charlie doesn't have a lot towards his pocket. So Kevin doesn't have to worry. He's got him playing a relaxed game, basically. He's playing a safe shot, actually. The, the cue ball should, yep, should fall toward the hole. It's gonna scratch. going to scratch. Took a safe shot and uh, went to what? Where did he go? Down the toilet. Yes. <laughs> uh, that's why we love you, Geraldine. So as you can see, a scratch means you owe, owe a ball. And that's what Kevin's doing. So Charlie now, Charlie's cherry picking. Nice shot. What just happened? Oh, he, did he hit? Yeah, he hit the nine. Kevin told him to put the ball back. By the way, it's not a foul if you touch another ball. Unless you touch two. Unless you touch two balls. Yes, that's true. If you touch two or more, that is a foul, guys. A little one pocket, uh, general one pocket rule for you guys out there. If there's anybody that would like to dispute that rule, um, feel free to send me an email. Nice cue ball set up for the 15. And it looks like we're at five to two. Six to two. Kevin played a good bank there, didn't he? And that ball, from my angle, looked like it was going in, but I think it, I think it rolled a little. Right here, this is a classic takeout shot. He decided to hit that slow. Um, you know, there's ways you can hit that where you, uh, you can actually gain quite a bit of distance between the balls, uh, like a, a kick and stick where you hit the ball hard with inside draw. You can come underneath it, do the same thing. Uh, this mistake actually cost Charlie a ball. So 
So, Kevin. Looks like he wants to just. Uh, You know, he could play the shot to his advantage where he thins the nine and uses those three balls to get behind the uh, nine. I don't know if I like this shot only because you, you can set up a bank pretty easily. I like that shot a little better, only the execution uh, was off a little bit. Uh, Charlie plays a great bank on that eight ball. I actually played with pretty good speed, too, because if he'd have missed that ball, the eight would have still been right in the foot. So he would have basically been putting Kevin on the defensive, forcing Kevin to uh, shoot that eight ball either in or take it out. Kicking at this ball. Uh, that is something, you know, he's going to get lucky here. <laughs> Extremely lucky. But that is something that most one pocket experts will tell you not to do is not to just kick at a ball. Uh, in fact, in fact, the kick that he was trying to do was not a very high percentage kick either. Uh, there are different kicks that are higher percentage, but that one was not. Nice three rail shot by Kevin. And good speed as well so you know for those of you who think this is just a matter of Charlie just rolling the four ball in the corner pocket think again because Charlie's actually on the defensive now with three ball close to Kevin's hole so this is where the strategy and the uh, patience comes into play and that was a nice shot uh, he may have left a bank for Kevin but he did do what he intended, which was to uh, move both of the balls in one shot. So let's see if Kevin will bank this nine ball towards his hole. Looks like he's playing that shot. It's going to come off the bottom rail. Charlie is, uh, he's, he, he almost, I saw what he was wanting to do there. He wanted to come off the four and come underneath the nine. It looks like that's what he still wants to do. Or play a bank. No, he wants to come underneath the nine. Wow. If he would have missed, he would have sold out. Wow. He did not take his time with that shot. Now Kevin's going to bank back. Charlie's playing for two balls. That was good speed. Very good speed because uh, you can easily miss a bank like that and then, you know, theoretically leave the three ball available for your opponent. Shooting the spot shot. Wow. Well, 
Okay, there's a one rail bank right here on the four ball. I don't know what he's looking at right there. Oh, uh, he's looking at a bank combo. Why, why would you play that? I love the one rail bank, Kevin. Two ball, not the four ball. Sorry about that. He's looking at the score. And I'm not really sure what's what's holding him up. For me, this shot is automatic. gonna go oh very close very nice it was a nice shot you see see how they're using that's called pocket speed guys and you can really use that to your advantage if you guys can get good at banking balls pocket speed then um, you might want to consider playing a little more one pocket. Now that was a strategic move by Charlie. He's basically sacrificing a ball. Um, in lieu of uh, scratching or selling it out. But actually, I think that ball was was uh, was hittable. You could you could have gotten it out of the pocket. Slow and easy. Once again, this is where the patience comes in. There's a, yeah, uh, there's a score, score error here. Looks like Charlie has seven. I think that's the case. Okay, so now we have a ball going down table. Changes things a little bit. This is what we call, in one pocket, this is what we call the end game. And the end game is basically a, another phase of the game where two players are battling it out for the last one or two balls it sometimes can take anywhere from 10 to half an hour, 10 minutes to half an hour. Um, you know, I've heard of some one pocket matches. Uh, I recently heard of uh, a one pocket match at the Don Coates Memorial, Memorial Tournament taking five hours. It was a race to three and it took five hours. By the way, I want to congratulate Alex Pagalion for winning that event came uh, first place and uh, Justin Bergman came in second place. Followed by uh, Mike Brown and Corey Duell and then Tony Chohan who came in fifth place. So congrats to those guys who came in uh, who played the Don Coates Memorial earlier this month.
Also, West Coast Swing's coming up, and uh, I hear Alex Pagalian's been asking questions about it. He wants to know, uh, he wants to know who to give his entry fee to. Those are good problems to have if you're a pool hall owner. <laughs> if you're a pool player, you're in trouble. <laughs> but you might get the chance to play Alex Pagalian. Is he looking to play at all the stops? He's he wanted to know when they were which ones when so all the stops of the west coast swing we might be lucky enough to uh see him on them i mean they all happen so close together if what six stops in one month that's awesome it's like a road player's wet dream right i mean even if you don't play the tournaments the action that's going to be around it's gonna be tons of action I hope he does play them, play them all, though. And the West Coast Challenge, which is happening at uh, California Billiards in Fremont, is for Moscone points. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Is it, is it for just the ten ball? Or? The ten ball. The the ten ball. Uh, we want to thank Matchroom Sports and uh, Luke Riches of Matchroom Sports and also Mark Kentrell of Legends and Champions for helping us to get the West Coast Challenge ten ball event, ten ball portion of the West Coast Challenge event this July um, awarded Moscone points. So all the really active players out there that are seeking Moscone points and trying to get on the Team USA for Moscone um, are encouraged to uh, enter the West Coast Challenge. It's 10,000 added 10 ball. I don't see that why they wouldn't play it anyway. 5,000 added one pocket? Yeah, 5,000 added one pocket, 10,000 added 10 ball. This July... And the week following that, the weekend following that, we will be back here at Hard Times Bellflower for the Hard Times Ten Ball. Yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, six six events in one month. I don't want to, I don't want to um, take away from the integrity of this match right now by talking about it. But um, but I will, I will, we'll revisit this conversation right after this game. Very excited about the West Coast Swing. I had to plug Hard Times since we are at Hard we Times. We are at Hard Times, <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Wow, we're gonna, we're gonna see a one ball showdown here, huh? Look at the sixes in the in the in the pocket, well, in the jaws of the pocket there. So, I don't think uh, Kevin's going to run two balls in a row. Ouch! Or not. I'm sorry, guys. I'm looking at the stream, <laughs> the stream picture. My commentary is like, like probably a minute and a half off. That's an old mistake. I can't believe I'm doing it again. Uh, it's been a while since I've done this. Charlie takes that game with a great bank. <laughs> yeah, he did. He did take it. And so, actually, this is one game apiece. Yes, it is. So, they've so taken in a, a... In a race to two, they're going to take a five-minute break and do their deal. So, while they're on a break, I will very quickly discuss the West Coast Swing with you guys. The West Coast Swing will take place this July. What the heck? It consists of six events taking place at four venues in the United States on the West Coast of the United States, starting with the fourth annual Cole Dixon 10 ball, 2,500 added, July 2nd and 3rd. That's 2,500 added 10 ball, July 2nd and 3rd. And then 
Um, immediately following that is the West Coast Challenge, one pocket and 10 ball, $15,000 added in that event. That's July 6th through 10th. And then very next weekend, we go to Hard Times for the seventh annual Hard Times 10 ball, 5,000 added for that event. And um, all of those events will award an entry for the US Open 8 and 10 ball championships coming immediately after that, July 20th through the 25th. The uh, U.S. Open 8-Ball and 10-Ball are sponsored by CSI. So we want you guys to check out povpool.com slash West Coast Swing, the 2016 West Coast Swing. And uh, if you have any issues with uh, getting to a computer or anything like that, ask your friends about it. And hopefully um, we're going to be shipping out some posters to some of your local pool halls in the uh, California area and Vegas. And uh, we want you guys to uh, uh, spread the word, help get the word out about the West Coast Swing. Or just call Daniel because that's what everyone does anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You can send me an email, by the way. You can uh, email me at daniel at povpool.com. And you can also... Or in general, you can email westcoastswingpool at gmail.com. And uh, all the, the, the three respective pool room owners have access to that email account. So if you need information about the Colt Dixon or the Hard Times 10 Bar or the West Coast Challenge, uh, Delbert Wong or Eddie Aregwin or Chris Swart can answer those questions uh, via that email. So feel free to utilize it um, for any of those events. Yeah. Uh, POV Pool is streaming four of the six events. Let me get this graphic out of the way for you guys. Another rack starting right now. Woo! Uh, POV Pool streaming four of the six events. And uh, except for the CSI US Open events. And these will all be free live streams. Free live streams. Who wants to watch the pay-per-view anyway these days? I mean, come on. <laughs> I've been watching, I, you know, I, I've made the mistake of buying a few pay-per-views lately. It's not a mistake. Okay, I'm There's just, I'm not gonna argue. Wait, there, but anyway. There, there was one I will say was a mistake. <laughs> Anyways, if you guys are going to do pay-per-view events out there, I suggest you up your game. Enough said. It's 1-1 one, one right now. Hey, buddy. How you doing, sir? Eddie Aragwin in the house. Anybody got any questions for him? You better hurry up and get over here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He used to work here, huh? Yeah. Mm hmm. Trying to find the Hard Times logo. Where is it? It's probably already in my database. Thank you for showing up and reminding me. Yeah, I've been busy though this morning. It is it's there all the time now. Well, looks like Kevin's gonna draw first blood here. Four, eight, 
Oh, or maybe not actually. Did Charlie get a ball? Very nice shot, using the stack for cover and trying to work the four and the 11 toward his hole. Okay, Kevin, Kevin did not draw first blood, Charlie did. <laughs> This is once a month deal here at uh, Hard Times Billiards. Every first Saturday one pocket, or last Saturday if the first Sunday happens right afterwards. I know guys, it's complicated. Well, Charlie left his cue ball um, looking straight out of a window. So. Kevin will probably, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming he'll, he'll end up rolling his cue ball uh, right between the six and the four. And he'll move the one away and he'll bring his cue ball up uh, toward where that five ball is. Now the one ball may actually, uh, the one ball may actually knock the five out. He's not gonna go for this. He's going for something else. He's gonna try to go underneath the one. That's not a bad shot either. Oh no, he's not. Uh, I don't know if I like that. That doesn't really do much for him. Different strokes for different folks. If Kevin is not careful here, he's going to be in a lot of trouble very quickly. Cue ball's buried now underneath the uh, three and the 12. tournament right here. All these tables running right now, they're all playing one pocket. Uh, it's a pretty simple game. They're, they're playing it too. Um, you have to make all your balls in one pocket. They have to make all their balls in one pocket. First person to get eight balls wins. So I'll just like Charlie right there. He's he's trying to make his balls in that pocket in the corner. Kevin, he's trying to make all his balls in that pocket. In the corner. So they're playing like cat and mouse, like defending and offend, you know. Yeah, no, no, we where are all these newcomers coming from, Geraldine? But this guy tell me, this guy got an in-stroke case and he's never seen one pocket before. That's a little suspicious. <laughs> yes? Did you have something to say? No, I don't. Maybe they don't play it everywhere. 
Maybe he just liked the case and he bought it. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> he opens it up and pulls out like, you know, a Gina Q and a. <laughs> <laughs> Like, what are you doing? Did you steal your dad's cue today or something? Gradually getting more balls towards his hole. But I'm just going to say again, like that, all it takes is one good shot to change things around. And look what he has done. He has really turned the tables on Charlie right here. Hey, I have a question for you. <laughs> you are a left-handed shooter. I'm a left-handed shooter, yeah. So, typically when you break for one pocket, do you break on the right-hand side of the table or the left-hand side of the table? I, well, oddly enough, I always break on the right-hand side of the table. But I'm not a natural left. I'm a natural right. Everything else I do is right-handed. So, okay. it's really weird. Like, there are some things that I'm more comfortable with. You know, like using a jump cue, I can use a jump cue with both hands. It's really weird for me. But I always... I, I can use a jump cue with both hands. I can also use a regular cue with both hands. Oh, like both poles. <laughs> both, you know, like an ambidextrous player would. But I can't play right-handed very well at all. It's really weird. Okay. Using a bridge, same thing. The reason why I ask you this is, so you break from the right-hand side, electing to choose the pocket on the opposite end, the left-hand side, right? For me? For me? As a lefty? Yeah. Yeah. I don't actually know what's good for the lefty. I mean, wouldn't you think? I usually break nine ball from the left side, too. That's from the right side, you mean? Oh, from the right side, yes, from the right side. The reason why I say this is, wouldn't you, as a left-hander, rather have your pocket being on the right-hand side so you would break on the left-hand side? Well, when it comes down to, like, uh, what side of the table you want to play from, I think it's probably best to, yeah, have the left pocket for a left-handed player. The left pocket, yeah, not the, the right pocket. The, I mean, sorry, the right pocket for a left-handed player. It's probably better. That's some knowledge for you. It's a little knowledge for me, but I'm so used to playing the, the left pocket. What's funny is I break from the left so often that my when I break from the right, no, it, you break I don't from break the, well. You break from the right so often. I mean, I break from the right so often that when I... Uh, Break from when the I left. break from the left, I don't break well. I'm not. I haven't done it in so long. Listen, this time I'm really. I'm giving up my game here, aren't I? So next time I play one pocket, they're gonna. They're gonna say, "All right, let's alternate pockets or something like that." Just make it hard for me. <laughs> or when they break, they're gonna break. They're gonna break to their pocket, not my pocket. Yeah, but it doesn't, as long as you're not breaking, I guess it doesn't matter, right? <laughs> That's true, too. I actually don't have a, you know, I don't really have a preference as to what pocket I play in. You just prefer to break on the I right just, hand side. I have a preference to what side I break from, yeah. So that kind of dictates it, doesn't it? Oh, nice bank shot. Uh, look at that ball. It's It kind of pinched on the 11, 
and just <laughs> double kissed and rolled right into uh, Kevin's pocket. Kevin's Kevin's taking a big chance here. He's going to shoot at this uh, 13. Um, oh, he scratched. That's a bummer. <laughs> bummer for him, you know. I mean, I'm not. I'm, I actually don't have a favorite to win this match. I'm just saying it's a bummer. Bummer because he made a great shot. Yeah, he yeah, played a good shot. And I didn't think he was going to scratch, but I did think it was a risky shot because missing he he could uh, sell out so charlie charlie picking cherries again Today's a real subdued kind of day, don't you think? Yeah. Mellow. Yeah. I like that. Today, today will be mellow. Tomorrow will be exciting. Excitement. Well, that's typically the one pocket. Crowd, yeah. Hidden users? I don't understand why they're... I have a friend named uh, Snooker in the oh. online world. <laughs> and, he's a virtual uh, friend. Yeah, he's a virtual friend. <laughs> anyway, he calls this Sleepy Pocket. <laughs> I love this game. Me too. Um, Kevin... Kevin, I think, tried to actually bank that ball. He did not try to make that ball. Uh, because, you know, obviously that's that's Charlie's pocket. How long has Kevin been playing one pocket? You know, I don't know. Like I said, he kind of took a sabbatical from pool in general for a while. I think he started playing again like a year or two ago. No, I don't even think it was that long. He showed up to last year's uh, Memorial Day tournament. And no one really knew who he was. Yeah, yeah, cube. I know. But we all like were like, "Where the hell have you been?" <laughs> oh, Mark Whitehead is also here, and Chris Wedekind. We actually have some, yeah. We have, we actually have some good players here today. You guys are, you guys are going to see some good matches today. You know, I mean, this is actually a pretty good match too. These guys are, you know, 
you know, they're making a few mistakes. But it's a good match, you know. They're mm -hmm. they're playing each other pretty hard. You got to be careful not to leave the bank back. Then that's that's the danger here with 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 those shots is leaving that bank right, giving it right back to your opponent to bank back away. I will say this about what I've seen of Charlie is. Uh, He's very competitive. Oh, Charlie's, yeah. He's extremely competitive. Hold on a second. I want to look at a, at a shot here. Okay. That's what I was thinking. He would, see how the 9 and the 11 are tied up? It looks like that uh, it might be dead to... It might be dead to uh, Kevin's pocket. So I think he was trying to bank the 1 into the 9. Uh, he overbanked it. He left Charlie tough, though. Uh, he, he didn't leave him horrible. I mean, he didn't really leave Charlie a shot, but he's left uh, Charlie a lot of a lot of choices here, I mean, a chance to be defensive. You don't always have to think offensively, and I think that's I think that's what Charlie's kind of struggling with right now is he wants to do something offensive. He wants to be a threat, you know? Mm -hmm. But you just gotta like, kinda hide sometimes, just hide. And let, let your opponent make the mistake. I think he left. He left uh, Kevin an opportunity to make the nine, but uh, if he misses the nine, he sells out because the 12 was in the pocket. So that was a good roll for Charlie. The nine clears the 14? Uh, you mean clears the 12? Oh, the 12? Yeah, yeah. He played the right shot. Like I said, you know, if he misses the nine, he, uh, he sells out the 12. Good cue ball. Well, I've lost count again of a ball, so let me take another look. Looks like three to two. So I think Kevin has two. are able to get a little bit close. Uh, but it's not optimum. I just wanted to show that to you. Just showing off. Just showing off is what I'm doing. King Kong's here. I'm sure uh, King Kong would gladly forfeit this tournament to play anybody for 100 a game. 
anybody wants to come down and play King Kong. Bernardo Chavez. Still working here? Uh, on and off here. Yeah. I've taken a long route to where you guys got. You should talk to this guy. He used to work here. Yeah, but not. Yeah. He didn't deal with much bullshit though. Oh, different owners. That's true. Bear in mind, guys, also, uh, Hard Times has regular, you know, did you know that Hard Times Billiards has six three-cushion tables as well, billiard tables? Every Friday, come down to Hard Times and play three-cushion billiards on the beautiful Gabriels and Verhovens they have, very well uh, maintained uh, by um, In Sioux Park. Eddie doesn't. No, Eddie doesn't do them. Eddie does them now? I don't know. He didn't. He I know. Last time I saw Insu, he was doing a billiard table here. Oh. Anyway. Eddie, Eddie learned from Insu Park. Ah, did he learn from it? Okay. I don't know. Anyway, if he's very well maintained tables. I don't know if, uh, <laughs> if he, if he, if Eddie is doing the re reclothing the three cushion tables, but he does know how. Hmm. Okay, couple balls down for Kevin here. Could have been three, but he missed it. Uh, however, Charlie may just roll this in. So I heard uh, they'll be getting new Andy cloth on these tables again. Yes, that is uh, that is the deal. Andy Cloth is going to be sponsoring the Hard Times 10 ball coming up here in July. And I think he's doing going to do all 20 tables. <gasps> really? Yeah, that's nice. what he talks about. That's what I'm hearing. Very nice. Mm -hmm. And Ernesto will be... Uh, Doing that, I'm assuming. I'm Ernesto Domingo. I, I mean, I know that he did them last year. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's 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 generally the guy here that does the tables at hard times, the uh, pool tables at least. Well, Charlie did give uh, Kevin that ball. Looks like Kevin's trying to bank this twelve back towards his hole.
other way. So I can get out. Daniel has the score correct. We're looking at a seven to three. Kevin needs one more ball. And that's it. Kevin takes it down. Wow. 